come back to the medical board exam experience with Dr. Kwafu. Today, our country of discussion is Australia. We have with us Dr. Shubra Badwaj, an Indian who graduated from the Madure Medical College in India in the year 2010. After she practiced for a while as medical officer, she then continued with her postgraduate at Lady Hardinger Medical College in New Delhi in India. She then decided to practice in Australia and so she successfully passed the Australian Medical Council Board exams. Today, she has joined us to share with us her experience on how to study, prepare, and all that we need to know about the Australian Medical Council Board exams. Let us join Dr. Shubra in our discussion room. Thank you. So, can you tell us who is qualified to write the Australian Medical Council exams? Okay, so actually, uh, for the Australian Medical Council exam, you need to finish your internship as well. Because many of, uh, uh, I get a lot of queries like I'm in final year MBBS and I'm in second year MBBS, can I write this exam? So no, you cannot write this exam. Uh, you have to uh, get your internship completed and then you will get a degree. And then after that, once you do that, after that you are qualified. So you have to uh, get your credentials uh, verified through ECFMG. <clears throat> so that's an online system. And there you have to add Australian Medical Council to receive your verified credentials. Okay. So, uh, of course, see, even if your credentials are not verified, you can still sit for the exam. But if you do not have your internship done, you are not like natural, you are disqualified. So, first you have to finish your internship. Then you have to, once you finish your internship, you can start this process of verification and you can give this exam. You can book the exam and you can give this exam. Okay. So so you, you have to finish medical school and yes. also finish your internship. Then yes. you get yes. ECFMG verification. Yes. yes. Then you can register for the exams. Yes. So um, after graduating from medical school, and um, how long did it take you to prepare for the exams, to study for the exams? Yeah, actually, if you talk about how long did it prepare for me to write this exam, I actually prepared for like uh, six months. Yes, yeah, six months, in which uh, the last two months were intense. Uh, like I was uh, reading all the time, literally. Whenever I was awake, I was reading. And uh, the initial four months were a bit relaxed, like I was reading for six to seven hours. And yes, uh, that is it. But in the last, uh, and, in, and especially in the last one month, I think uh, I was only reading. I was just sleeping and reading and nothing else. It was like, yeah. Okay. It is taken in how many languages? Is it, it is just one language. It's in English. Yes. It's in English. It's just one. Yes. Okay, and is, is it divided into different sections or is it just one-time exams? You just take it and you are done? No, actually, AMC is a, a two-part exam. Okay. So, one, the part one is uh, MCQ-based. That okay. is AMC part one, which I have qualified. And the part two is clinical. Uh, okay. So, that I have yet to qualify. Uh, but both the exams are in English. Mm-hmm. And uh, yes, and uh, and uh, yes, it's in English only, and and your English has to be like uh, pretty much much good because uh, in the exam uh, they give you long stems and it's like they are not one-liner questions, they are long questions, and if your English is not good, you will be probably not able to understand, and the time is also less. So yes, okay. you have to have a good English. Yes. Okay. So the MCQs is usually how many questions? MCQs is actually there are 150 questions. Okay. okay. And uh, the time is three and a half hours. Okay. So, and then you cannot pause your exam. Means even if you have to take breaks, they do not give you any breaks. Mm -hmm. If you want to take a break, 
you have to uh, do it at the cost of exam uh, so right. time is a pretty much you know um, most of the people tell me this time is a pretty much you know a yeah. crucial factor yes okay yes. So, so what is the passing mark for the mcq exam yes the passing marks is 50 percent it is not percentile it is 50 okay. percent and it remains pretty much the same it okay. doesn't change with the pattern or the difficulty level uh, but yes the questions are scored differently like uh, out of 150 uh, 120 are scored questions and the rest 30 are non-scored questions and but nobody knows which one is scored and which one is dummy okay so then out of those 150 uh, 120 that are scored those are scored differently like uh, i think the emergency and trauma part carries more weightage those questions are uh, uh, scored at a higher marking than you know the normal questions the easier one the like common questions mm -hmm. like that ethics part is scored more and emergency trauma ethics all these things are scored more okay so and the mcq is computer based exams right yes so is it taken in every part of the world or is only taken in australia no it is there in most of the part not all not everywhere but yes in most of the part it it's there in most okay. of the like in australia in india and then uh, not in Sri Lanka, I suppose, not there in Sri Lanka, but like in Greece, in Turkey, yes. Uh, means like in not all, but in 50% of the world, 50% of the world, they have the centers. They have the centers, okay. So what about the clinical parts? How is the clinical part organized on a typical clinical exam day? How is yes, it like? Actually, see, uh, the clinical part you're talking about or... Uh, uh, the clinical part is actually I have uh, I have not attempted that clinical part yet. I'm preparing okay. for it, okay. but it is still there are 15 stations for clinical, okay. and uh, out of which again I think two or three are not scored, uh, and then the rest are scored, and then uh, yes again there uh, there is time issue. You get 10 minutes for every station, and you have to do the particular task. Okay. Somewhere they will ask you to maybe make a diagnosis, and then somewhere they'll give you, uh, they'll ask you the management. Then the time is pretty less; it is just ten minutes, mm -hmm. and actually two minutes for the question and eight minutes for whatever you want to do. So yes, and then for clinicals, the part two, the center is only in Australia, not anywhere else. How much does it cost to register for the exams, the MCQ yeah. and the clinical parts? Yes, actually, it cost much, first of all, even for making the account, for getting your credentials verified by ECFMG, and then making your account in Australian Medical Council uh, website. Uh, it, it's, it cost a lot. Like, the exam is $2,700. The exam itself is $2,700. Mm -hmm. uh, exam fees, I mean. Uh, and yes. <clears throat> Sorry, it is 1.5 lakh I know. So yes, it is 2700 Australian dollars. Okay. okay, and then for the verification and all everything, uh, it takes pretty much for like I had spent two lakhs around like two lakhs for just for getting my account uh, made, um, the verification done, and the exam fees paid. For only this much, I have paid two lakhs INR. So it is like fifty dollars here, hundred dollars there, hundred USD there, fifty USD there, then five hundred USD there, small, small, small. So at every step they charge. Yeah. So it's like the pretty much costly exam. Yeah. So one has to be prepared financially, not just studying alone. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So so um, doctor, when we are preparing for the MCQs, what are some of the books you used that helped you and that you will recommend for someone who wants to also study for these exams? Uh, yes, actually, see, first of all, there is a handbook by AMC itself, the blue book, we call it. And book. that is uh, pretty much outdated. The latest edition came sometime in 2009 or seven, I guess. So mm -hmm. it's like pretty much outdated. 
uh, and uh, they have moved ahead uh, they have moved a lot ahead like in that book basically they gave you more questions on diagnosis of the disease but now they have moved pretty much ahead they ask about management uh, so but, but what we generally do and what is generally done is that yes for once you have to read the blue book because even though it is outdated it gives you an idea of australian medicine okay so that remains the same because as an imgs we are uh, we are preparing and we have done already our you know medicine and um, our internship in different countries so in our countries management is different uh, but uh, yes it gives you a very good idea of how the australians manage okay. even though it is outdated uh, you will get an idea about their system and then secondly there is john murtag and uh, we have to read uh, selective topics from john murtag whatever on like there are some fixed topics on which they ask questions questions okay yes so john murtag not back to back john murtag never back to back this is a mistake many people do and they say that we have read john murtag back to back back to back and still we are not able to qualify so there's a very common problem actually it's a very interesting book so okay. you would be seduced to read it to read, but okay. yes but if you think about exam point of view you should only read the relevant topics and then thirdly the new guidelines the racgp rch the rnc og guidelines for management that is very important because almost every year the australians keep on revising their guidelines okay. so that is very important and yes even for psychiatry they have special uh, specific you know on racgp and you know they have their specific uh, psychiatric associations where they keep on updating the guidelines mm -hmm. okay so that is important for i i advise everybody for management part uh, like both the investigations and treatment you should go for the guidelines even in john or target is not sufficient when you were preparing did you get any questions assessment questions that help you to assess yourself before sitting for the exams like some past yes. questions yes 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 a lot of uh, recall questions are available and that give you a good idea of okay. the exam pattern of the recent topics that they are, are asking so that is really that really helped me and i would advise uh, people not just mug up the recalls Uh, you read the recalls and then you uh, uh, read the topic actually because they change the stem and they change the options and even if they do not change the recaller it's a human error the recaller recalls just two options and you know i i study those only those two options and i did not read the whole topic and then i go to exam and then i say oh my god they have changed the question so you should read topics one thing about the recalls and then secondly there are a lot of question banks you can do any of the question banks all are equally good okay did you attend a special classes or did you get yourself a special lecturer to prepare you for no, this exam actually, i did not have time actually i was working also that time i was doing my senior residency so actually i did not have time the time zones were clashing I, my work was like nine to four, and then it was a lot of clash, so I could not. I did not have time. Okay, so you studied by yourself. Yes. After the exam, how long does it take for you to get your results? It takes uh, uh like it takes around a month or more because every um every month on I think on fourteenth or fifteenth of every month. uh they publish the results for last month okay, okay. for example uh, for all the slots for whoever who gave exam in october be it 1st october be it 2nd october be it 15th october be it 25th october for everybody they will publish the result on like 13th or 14th november so okay. yes it takes around 15 days to one month depending on when was your exam if someone fails the exams how is the person able to retake it and is there a limit for retaking the exams you can take it whenever you want again and there is no limit you can take it for 10 times you can take it again and again in a period of 10 years there is no limit doctor if you are 
preparing for these exams again, what will you do different? I will take more time actually. <laughs> because oh, okay. that, yes, because actually I had a very less time. So I was like, I had very less time and then I had already booked the exam mm. and I did not want to waste money and uh, I had really short time. So yes, I did, I did not want to waste really, you know, 1.5 lakhs that was yeah. in my pregnancy, INR. So yes, I studied a lot actually within a very less time. So yes, if I have to book the exam again, I'll take a lot of more time. Like I'll take maybe eight months to prepare. Yeah. Okay. You enter the council. What is the next step? Are you supposed to do house job, residency, postgraduate? How is it after passing the whole exams? Actually, that is uh, that depends very much on individual experience. For example, if you if you have a lot of experience in your own country, you have six to seven years of uh, post PG experience in your country. So even after AMC Part One, you are eligible to give Pesky. That is another thing, Pesky. That is a specialist pathway. So you can give that pathway and straight away you can get a job, you know, that is easier. That is interview based kind of exam. Uh, but if you are, if you do not have such kind of experience, you run short on the offers and then you give part two. And then uh, if you have work rights already, if you are a TR or a PR, things are easy for you. But if you are not that TR or a PR, you have to find your own way. Uh, they, they, of course, they provide regional visas. They provide temporary regional visas, especially the new visas that have come in November. So they provide those visas to work in regional areas like Darwin, uh, Tasmania. Uh, but yes, uh, uh, people who have an experience always have an edge over the fresh candidates. That is one thing. Yeah. Yes. Will you encourage a fresh medical graduate to just start preparing for the exams, or you encourage a person to work for a while before sitting for the exams? No, I would. If somebody wants to move to Australia, if somebody has found that life would be better in Australia as compared to his home country, mm -hmm. that is again, I would say, is an individual decision. So you should start preparing fresh as soon as you graduate. And meanwhile, you should do something like you should not just sit at home and prepare because Australians, even for two, three months, you are out of practice. Uh, they, they, you know, they just, they look for uh, you. They, why would you, would they take you if you are not working in your own country for like six months? Generally, this happens in every profession actually. Mm -hmm. So I would advise people should start studying and then people should simultaneously, if it's a fresh graduate, then you can work in, you know, like emergency, you can work in ICU, you can work under in some uh, intensive care as a, you know, medical officer or a junior resident. So then you build your CV and you can do short courses, some short online courses are, are available. For example, during this COVID time, Harvard University has launched a course that is free. It is on ventilation. So that is free. So like this, there are very small courses like ventilation course, ACLS, VCLS, then a short two, three months course in intensive care. Mm -hmm. So all these things, if you know, know, they will add to your CV because mm -hmm. ultimately they want the IMGs in, you know, like emergency, in intensive care, and in gynecology, you know, they are primary regional centers which do not have specialists. Yes, that's a thing. So you initially um, mentioned the cost of the exams. Is it yes, the, yes. you said um, it's $2,700 Australian dollars. Is it only for I, the MCQ or for the entire uh, no, 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 it's just for the MCQ. I think it is more for the uh, for the uh, part two. It's more. It's I think uh, around two lakhs or something INR. So it would be more. I think oh. it would be three thousand five hundred Australian dollars. Yes. Yes, um, which subjects are they? Do they test on? Like what are yes. the areas? The discipline. Yes, actually, in the MCQ part, they just you know they just check on medicine. 
surgery in the clinical parts medicine surgery ortho uh, then gynecology obstetrics uh, ethics uh, pediatrics emergency trauma that's all they focus no non clinical uh, things and yes there is one thing stats that they put uh, a question or two at times that is important because it is difficult uh, and that's a part of psm actually the study designs that is the only part of uh, community medicine psm that they take so okay. that is stats and study design okay. and, okay. yes and then ethics they ask question on ethics that is also important so, so even the mcqs they don't ask anatomy biochemistry also nothing basic in the exam do you have any idea about how much doctors in australia are being paid their salary yes actually uh, to start with it's not much uh, if you start uh, maybe for some time you have to do for free uh, you know to get into the system you might have to do observership mm-hmm. and sometimes uh, you are not paid for ob- you were never paid for observership and sometimes you might also you have to pay something you know to get into the observership so you might have to pay some fees to the hospital to get into the observership and yes it is for like 5 to 6 months okay. and uh, if you talk about internship theoretically internships are possible for imgs uh, but practically it is not possible because even the australian graduates are competing with imgs for internship so you just see practically an img will never get internship mm-hmm. uh, but yes uh, house jobs after observership you can get house jobs and uh, then if you if you if somebody is running a gp clinic and uh, he is you know like kind enough or he has a need uh, for doc- for some doctor uh, then he might also you know give you some observership in his own clinic that is possible and uh, then there yes, you have to work and then uh, you have to apply to hospitals to gp clinic and then they give you offer you job so initially you don't get paid much you get paid around a uh, 1 lakh you know australian dollar per year that's not much actually uh, but yes j- gradually when you start you just get paid more sometimes you get paid as a gp starting salary is even less it is just the minimum for you know skilled uh, Thus, the minimum skilled wages, you know, that is at eighty thousand AUD in Australia per year. But yeah, that is for first year. You, gradually, you start to earn. After passing all the exams, the government or the council doesn't give you job. You have to apply for job yourself. Yes, there is a website where they need the task force. So there is website for every state. Like there is a website for New South Wales, a separate website for Victoria, then separate website for Tasmania, separate website for Northern Territory. So you fill all your details. You fill you you put up your certificate, and then you put up your experience, and then you can wait. So every year, I think in May or uh, yes, every year in April or May, they are uh, doing this RMO campaign. where they are taking up new rmos and that is usually for one year so you can just apply and you can wait that is one way and then the second way is that you can directly co- uh, contact the recruitment agencies okay. that is also free. we do not have to pay the recruitment agencies so you can directly contact the recruitment agencies you can give your experience you can give your exam certificate and then they will uh, when uh, when there is an interview offered they get they'll just ask you okay so the recruitment agency what do they look at to employ you do they look at your exam score or what do they look at exam score is actually exam score is not at all important you pass the exam that's it nobody mm-hmm. bothers more than that it doesn't matter you score 250 or you score 200 you pass the exam that's it that's important the most the more important thing is that how much experience do you have what are the skills do you have so there is a in your cv you write everything you can do a like you can do a plural tap you can do a you know, small things you have to write you can incubate or you can suture you can do little surgeries so this is all they want uh, an img to do 
because in regional areas these things are you know they do not usually recruit a specialist in regional areas so that's where they need IMGs. Why um, of all countries you chose to work in Australia? What, what, what's your motivation? Yes, actually, it's a beautiful country, <laughs> one thing. And then I had my relatives in Australia, another okay. thing. And yes, the exam was, I think, uh, it's okay. Exam is also not very difficult. And okay. then right after giving the exam, you get a job offer. Whereas in MLE, you have to do residency before you just start. So, okay. yes. Yes. So, um, do you think there are a lot of um, IMGs or foreigners practicing in Australia? Yes, actually, there are a lot of IMGs because I was there for like uh, you know, for a few months. And uh, yes, there are a lot of uh, IMGs that are working as a GP. I saw actually, I saw mostly IMGs working as a GP in, G- oh. in the GP game. Yes. Those preparing to write these exams or who are. Uh, young graduates who are planning to settle in Australia, what advice do you have for them? Um, I would advise them to start studying as soon as they can and then add things to your CV, add experience to your CV. Like you should do some small course, you should work in emergency, you should work in ICU and you should and you should just keep working. You should not just sit at home and start preparing. And the second advice I want to give them is that if you're planning to migrate, you should like uh, finish all the exams, right? You should finish all the exams and then you should, you know, move to Australia. You should finish part one and you should finish part two because part two is more difficult and it requires a lot of mental stability. So I, I would advise you finish both the exams, then you can move to Australia and um, see the um, the chances of finding a job even after qualifying both the parts. Okay. Uh, sitting in your country, it's like just one person. But if you move there to Australia, the chances definitely improve. Okay. So and even for some time, you can uh, you can go on student visa. There are a lot of small courses available. Okay, so you can just, you have to be onshore when you're looking for a job rather than to be, you know, offshore. Okay. 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 Thank you very much, Dr. Shubra, for joining us today. And and, uh, we hope to have you on this platform again. Thank you. Thank you.